Welcome back to Here's Next Door. Thank you all for watching. Today we're back in Susquehanna Township near Harrisburg. We're going to do a station rigs on their heavy rescue. So we're going to be beating up with their chief today, Larry Reese. He's going to show us around this truck. Thank you for inviting us in, brother. Hey, Mike. Thanks for coming. Yeah, I appreciate it. This is an absolute beautiful truck. So can you tell us what you have here? Well, this is our custom built 2019 uh, Pierce Velocity. Uh, this was built for us. Uh, it took a lot of work and manpower to try to put this thing together. Uh, it's just over 43 feet long. Wow. Uh, about 11 and a half feet high and weighs in at uh, just under 56,000 pounds. Okay, so, so for this size vehicle, do you need a CDL to drive this? So in the state of Pennsylvania, you're required to meet the CDL criteria. In other words, you have to read the CDL manual and stuff like that. Okay. But it's actually based upon the chief or the authority having jurisdiction to grant you approval to drive the apparatus. Okay. So CDLs are not required for fire apparatus in the state of Pennsylvania. Okay, well, that's good. You know, not a, peop not a lot of people have those, but we need people to drive these. So oh, coming in and teaching you how to do it would be a good thing. Can you kind of walk us through what you have in the cab here? Sure. Mind if I open the door? Not at all. All right. So talk us through what you have here, Chief. All right, well, we have the basic controls that you're going to use to actually drive and operate the apparatus. Um, we have a Pierce command zone up here, which gives us all the information about the uh, equipment itself. It tells us our fuel level, how much depth fluid we have, and then we can actually go through different pages. We can see the different cameras that the apparatus has on it. We do have side view camera, rear view camera. Okay. So as we're going to make a turn on that blind side, we can see what's going to be over there before that turn actually happens. Love technology. And they actually come on automatically as soon as we hit the turn signal. Okay. So that's a, that's a big plus that we have there. Up here we have all of our warning lights as well as our scene lighting um, that we can turn on remotely as we're driving down the road. What we did with this is we made all the scene lighting 12 volt so that as we're going, we don't have to worry about starting the generator before we get those scene lights turned on. Okay. So especially the front view, as we're going down looking for an address or something like that, or point up to an accident scene, it really allows us that visibility without having to worry about stopping, engaging the generator, going back on right, so, right. Um, so it's a big help that we have there. Yeah. Uh, we did switch out. We uh, decided to go with uh, the wireless headsets. Okay. Uh, so the driver and, and officer both have wireless headsets. And especially on this apparatus, that's a big help because the driver can go up, kind of reconnoiter the scene and see what's going on there. Uh, and they can call back to the truck and say, hey, look, this is what we got. This is what we're going to need. Bring this up with you without having to tie up additional radio traffic. That so is awesome. it's not you're not talking over incoming units because you know as well as I do as soon as you get on the scene especially of anything significant you have multiple pieces of apparatus trying to talk saying what's my assignment what do you need where can I go and stuff like that so by doing that it allows us that direct access that we can call back and say this is exactly what's going on this is what I need that's a good way to do that you know I always thought of the old fire con that you plugged in right. and you talk to each other in the cab but you actually have some distance between you and the scene it's so this is actually reason. still made by Firecom. Okay. <laughs> so uh, it's just a newer, the, the newest and best with Bluetooth technology and right, stuff like right. that. Now everybody in the back still has the, the old traditional plug-in style. Okay. Uh, only the driver and operator uh, went with the wireless. That's a good way to do that. Um, aside from that, I talked a little bit about the generator. So we do have onboard hydraulic tools as well as the ability to power fans and lights and stuff like that. So we do have a 35 kW generator on board, okay. which if you know anything, 35 kW, you can power you know half the city with it. Yeah, especially now that everything's switching to even to LEDs. Exactly, it takes less and less power. Yeah. Um, the biggest reason we got uh, the big generator is our winch runs, it's an electric winch uh, that we run off the front. Okay. Um, so that takes a, a pretty good draw uh, to make that run. Right, right. Um, I don't know if you've noticed with a lot of uh, EMS apparatus, they actually have an air dump, yep. air ride suspension. Yeah. We actually got that put into the back of this so that when we're on scene, I mean, you can see 11 and a half feet, it's yeah. pretty high up. So if you're trying to get in the top back compartments, we can dump the air and it lowers it a little bit more than six inches down to the ground. That's so awesome. So when we pull up, you may hear that. Pss, okay. 
lowering it down and that makes it easier especially for our shorter or, or junior members to reach stuff once we get on scene absolutely cool so how about you walk us around sure. and see what else you got I love the black over red. Is that a newer scheme for you guys? So that is a newer paint scheme. This is actually the first piece that we have that we went with it. Uh, and the eventuality, we're hoping to switch everything over to it. Right now, it's just this and the Chiefs cars that have the, okay. that paint scheme. But okay. yeah, uh, we definitely like it. Uh, Pierce was actually able to black out the township patch for us. Okay. Uh, so it matched the paint scheme and stuff like that. Right, right. Uh, do you want to go inside? or? Yeah, let's take a look going? inside first. Okay. And back here, how many crew members do you carry? So we can do a total of a 10-man crew. Okay. Uh, which is six up front, so four in the back, two up front, and okay. then an additional four in the walk-in style. Okay. Of the back. Oh, I didn't even know it was a walk-in, too. Oh, yeah, so. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot to go Plenty over. Plenty <laughs> of room. Man, this thing has absolute ton of room in here. Oh, it's great, isn't it? So I, you know, I'm a five foot eleven, and I'm not even getting close to the room. <laughs> <laughs> so in here, you have all the air packs on right. each seat. You have your radio systems. It looks like you're using the old, the newer Motorola Bluetooth capable. Yep, uh, the Bluetooth's not enabled with the SCBAs yet. Okay. Uh, however, it does have the capabilities built into the uh, radios. So okay. That's future endeavors. Right. And you got a tick back here too. Right, not only do we have a tick there, but the officer also carries one of the little seek ticks on their SCBA so that they can, as they're doing a 360 and stuff like that, it helps them kind of do a quick look as they're going through. That's awesome to have. I see that you're using the MSA uh, air packs. Yeah, we have the MSA G1s. Um, it, it, you know, it's you either like them or you hate them. Yeah, we did a uh, um, live burn video and you know MSA came out and sponsored mm -hmm. the video for us. It was a great video. We used the G1s, we did their Bluetooth. Really saw a big difference using the Bluetooth technology with the mask versus not. Uh, but everybody has them. Scott right. has some, everybody else has them. It's just a matter of what it is. I really like MSA. It's very comfortable, but everybody's got their preference. I mean, we're from Pennsylvania. We grew up with MSA. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so and it else, but you have your irons back here. What else do you have working back here? I see you also got a, a um, combo pole. hook. Yep. yep. Um, they're the main tools that we keep back here, and they're for the quick grab for these guys. So, obviously, operating the heavy rescue, when we get to a fire scene, our, seat, our job's going to vary. Uh, we may be acting as a second do special service, whereas we're supporting a truck company. Okay. Or we may get there and we're doing our own search and rescue, or we may serve as a rig company. Okay. Rapid intervention Bench team. team. Yeah, my yeah. God. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's basically for the safety of the firefighters, uh, is what a RID is designed for. Correct. So we'll have EMS there, and the fire department themselves are there to get the victims out. But the RID team is there specifically to help a firefighter if a firefighter would be Yeah, down. that's always an important element of a... Of a Oh yeah, Fire absolutely. It's become in commonplace that they actually dispatch a company specifically for RIT. Right. Uh, now back here, do you carry any EMS stuff? So most of our EMS stuff will be in the walk-in as we walk back here. Okay. Um, the only thing we carry up here are some gloves and stuff like that and some of the protective measures with COVID going okay. around. And sure, like sure. Uh, over here we have our large area search bags okay. and stuff like that because once again, being the heavy rescue or the squad company, depending on where you're from, um, we may have to go in and do searches in commercial buildings and large occupancies and stuff like that. So we keep those there so we can do a quick grab, get that stuff, right. and we can get that Connect stuff Connect that started. on, go in. Exactly. That's awesome. All right, how about we step back out here? We'll do the alleyway a little bit later. We'll okay. do the outside and come back into the alley. Is that okay with you? Works for me. All right, we'll step back out. All right, so I told you about that electrical reel earlier. So we'll start over here. So okay. this is the, on both sides, we have the 200 foot electrical reel going to the junction box so we can run all kinds of different things depending on what the situation entails. Right. Um, then coming next to it, we have the, uh, the Ampkiss 240SS system. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it at all. So it is a mounted hydraulic system. It kind of takes the place of the, uh, 
the older system, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. They had Hearst. Uh, they had high. Yeah, it was the Amcus specific, the Ultimate system. The Ultimate, sorry. okay. Uh, so it kind of takes the place of the Ultimate system, uh, as far as you know, speed and dependability and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, so you actually look back here. I mean, everything's going. On. Uh, electronic, yeah. so it actually has a computer screen rather than the old valves. You know, you'd sit there, turn on and off a valve and stuff like that. Okay, this controls it all. You just sit there and press it. It's uh, it's touch screen or it has manual buttons you can hit with it and stuff like that. Okay, can we um, pull one of these out and just kind of show the audience what sure. you're talking about? Sure. So, uh, so this is our jaws of life that the lay yeah, public so, would know. About it. So, yeah, this would be what the, the public would know as the jaws of life. Okay. Obviously, this is the Amcus version, not the Hearst version, so right. uh, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, so you can see, right? Okay. How they so go. that would be the spreaders, and this right. is your cutters. Okay. Correct. And it's all pre-connected. You don't have to worry about setting anything up. It's already ready to go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, they've actually come to the point. I think most of the manufacturers have it now, but they actually have lights on the handles. Okay. So as you're trying to get that purchase point late at night, you can just flip on the lights, and you can actually see what's going on. <laughs> That's pretty slick. Um, then we actually have a, a dual unit here, a dual Simo unit. So if if we're too far away from the truck, we only have 150 foot of hose pre-mounted here. Okay. So if we're farther than 150 foot, we can bring this out. Okay. And it actually has a boost feature. So rather than just keeping a standard flow, it can actually boost that pressure to give us more power when we're trying to spread or cut something as it goes. And then we have the reel that goes along with it. Right, right. Um, so that makes it pretty easy to use. Yeah, um, yeah. But just like everything else, it weighs a lot. Um, then we have uh, we have different types of cutters depending on what we're going to be going into. Sure. Um, especially with the new vehicle construction, we have more boron and stuff like that that's going in there, which requires a higher tensile strength cutter right. to get through it. Then we have some of the older cars, you know, the old VWs and stuff like that, <laughs> that that everybody's familiar with. And for those, we can use the Speedway cutters, which is just a larger cutter head, okay, um, but it has less cutting force. Right. Uh, so we can use that to get through stuff like that. Um, I mean, anybody that's done any home improvements there, knows what a sawzall is. Sawzall. Uh, and this is a great tool for us to use because you know it allows us to go through different types of materials. All we got to do is change out the blade yeah. to make it work. Yeah. Back in the day when I was going through my training, uh, I used a sawzall with like three different blades mm -hmm. and literally cut the car, whole car apart. Oh, exactly. You know, yeah. It took a while, but we were able to <laughs> cut it right in half, cut it through the roof, cut it through A and B posts, and just cut that with one piece of tool. Oh yeah, just for fun. The only thing we are finding is that with those heavier, the, the heavier materials like the boron and stuff like yeah. that, you have to cut at a slower speed and you have to keep it lubricated with a little bit of soapy water okay. and stuff like that to make it work. Right, right. Um, then we have our toolkit here, uh, just for vehicle accidents. We have another windshield cutter and stuff like that, okay. so it's kind of a redundancy of what we had up there. Right. Um, and then we have our hydro ram for if we're doing forcible entry. Okay. So what that is, is you put it in the door frame and that spreads the door apart okay. so you can get through. So I've mentioned that before, I call it the old rabbit tool. Right. Yeah, you, I put, it, that, you yeah. put a wedge and it just kind of, you just hand crank it and yep. it kind of pop, put, pushes apart. So unlike the rabbit tool, that's kind of like the spreaders, if it's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. This one is actually just a little plate that goes in and okay. it just pushes it. It's just a simple one stage ram that that works for that. That's awesome. I love the fact and how well organized you are. You have everything labeled, everything has its place, everything knows where it means. You know, to go. I, I don't have OCD and you know, <laughs> I, I gotta tell you, I, I can't imagine how I'd be if I had, because I, I mean, the clutter and stuff like that drives me nuts. Right. So maybe I do have it, I'm just not diagnosed. Um, but yeah, when we went through and we were laying the stuff out, um, just like with the, what I was saying with the chains and stuff like that, we want to try to keep everything close proximity to where we're going to be using it. Right. Um, so like the base plates, the extra strut controls and stuff like that, that'll go along with the Paratex that we're about to see in a second. We want to keep that in close proximity to where we're going to be using it. Right. And by keeping it in this type of setup, we can pull this tray out and we can walk that over to wherever we need it and we have everything that we're going to need to make it work. Right, right. We were talking about that monopod head. Um, so this is actually the where we keep the top of the monopod here okay. um, that we're going to show you a little bit later. Oh, awesome. And uh, so we keep that right here right, right by one of the receivers. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Um, so that's pretty much it for this compartment. Okay. But if you want to come back here. Oh, one thing I didn't mention while we're on the side here because we were talking about the monopod head. Yeah. If you look up. Oh. All right, so the we actually have an attachment point. Yeah. Um, so there are high point anchors. So we have one at the front of the cab on each side, right. or the front of the box on each side, and we have four of them on the back corners. Okay. Two on each back corner. Right. Uh, the biggest thing you remember with these is the ones on the back corner, because they're structural built into the frame itself, these are a 9,000 pound radiant eye. Wow. Uh, each one of those is rated for 9,000 pounds. Okay. Well, 
that one up there, because it's it, it's kind of a remote location, is only rated for 3,000 pounds. Okay. That's something our guys Even have still, to keep 3, in. Pounds. That's a lot of weight. Yeah. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Right. I think that's the first time I've ever seen that on a rescue, have it preset like that. I know they've had ones uh, in the corners where they pop off a cap and then they right. stick it in and they lock it down. Yours is already preset. It's a lot more convenient. Yeah. Because we can actually set our distances and stuff Okay. Uh, for when we're setting that monopod head so we don't have to pre-measure anything. Right. Um, we don't have it set up that way now, but because we use an Aztec system, which we can show you then, but it, it makes it pretty quick work. All right. All right? Okay. So I told you you were going to like the organization. Woo. Now I'm going to show you both sides here okay. at the same time. Because we never know what type of truck or what type of vehicle we're going to have going down the highway, we have to be equipped for everything from, that is from sharp. really heavy vehicles yeah. to the standard vehicles to light vehicles. Right. Um, and Paratex puts out a great product. Uh, we're very familiar with it. We've used them for years. Okay. Um, so we're able to adapt and we're able to make everything work for what we need it to. Okay. Um, along with this, we also have the Hydrofusion, which is up front, which is another Paratex product. Um, but with that, we can actually lift up to 20,000 pounds in a strut format. Okay. So these are made for stabilization as if we have a vehicle on its side or something like that, just to keep it from rolling any further or anything yeah. along those lines. Um, whereas they are made that we can actually lift with it. We're not going to lift anything with these. You can tighten them down by hand if you want to, right. um, but we're not. You, they're not really designed for that. Right, but with these kind of sizes that I'm looking at, you can do a dump truck or a little Mini Cooper. Right, exactly. <laughs> and then uh, anything between. You, you have to be prepared for everything, uh, right. depending on what it's going to be. Um, so we have a set on each side um, that's actually pre-set up. So everything's together. The base is with it, the head is with it, the uh, attachment straps are with it, that all you got to do is grab that strut you can take it down and you can go to town. That's awesome, absolutely um, awesome. And I told you before about the technical rescue stuff. So these are also the same struts we're gonna need if we have to do a raker shore or something like that okay. for structural collapse, yeah. or if we have to do something with trench rescue. Right. So while we don't carry the shore forms, if we bring in somebody like Harrisburg City or York Rescue 69, somebody like that that carries the shore forms, we can use this to supplement their equipment as well. All right, that's so, a good collaboration between it, different it departments. It has to be. I mean, nobody, no one department can afford to have everything. Right. So you have to be able to work together. That's awesome. Yeah. So let's cut out the middle here. All right. All right, so once again, we may have to su uh, supplement a truck company or something like that, or we may be serving as rich. So we want to keep a good assortment of ladders. Um, so we actually keep a 24 and two 16 foot roof ladders on here. Okay. Um, but a lot of times you know, we may be operating on the highway. We're not doing a structure fire. So we have a lot of tractor trailers, buses, stuff like that, that sit up high off the ground. Sure. So we actually have two of the little giant ladders here. Okay. And we have a platform that we can set up in between them. So basically okay. we can set up portable scaffolding right beside that vehicle so we can work at a height right. and not have to worry about anything. Yeah. We can walk back and forth and, and be good to go. That's awesome. Um, we talked about that rapid intervention team earlier. Um, so if we get called for a rapid intervention team, we have a Fresno ladder here. Okay. And we have one of the fast boards yep. as well as uh, spare air and uh, stuff like that, that we can just basically pull out this ladder Two people can carry that ladder, and we have everything we need to get started. And you're in service, just exactly. Like that. Um, awesome. Talked about those poles, the specialty poles. So this is actually that handle that's Screws easily right adaptable for anything. Right. You feel that? That's yeah. a heavy-duty handle. Yeah, that ain't gonna <laughs> break. So, and it's, but it's nice and soft too. Right. I mean, you know, obviously, I'm using my work gloves on top of this, yeah. but yeah, absolutely. Um, and then we have a lot of things in here like pry bars and. Um, you mentioned the Stokes basket before. Yep. So here we have our Stokes basket set up along with some backboards inside. Uh, we have long pieces of four by four that we can actually cut down. So you saw the cribbing on that side. We have cribbing on that side, but that cribbing may not be suitable for what we're trying to do. So we have long boards here and we have long boards down here. So you can see like this one's 110 inches long. Wow, um, okay. So we can pull those out and we can cut them to length for what we're gonna need. Right. Uh, especially if we're doing that trench rescue or structural collapse or something like that. So we can at least get some kind of shoring in there right. uh, before anything gets going. Now this is something interesting, um, specifically for confined space or water rescue. Okay. So this is a handle for one of our search cameras. Oh, okay. So we can take this, the camera monitor will mount here, Yeah. and we can sit there. Now, once I have a camera on, you'll be able to see it, but right. you can turn that head different directions. Like a little snake kind of thing. Yep, so you can look at it there. It's right. kind of moving a little bit. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, so we can turn that different directions once we get it in. Okay. Uh, and obviously we can extend the pole out right. a pretty good distance in order to make that work. Yeah. We did a video uh, with uh, Chester County's Urban Search and Rescue Team, and they had poles like that that were mm -hmm. very, so they'll do a, a borehole and send that thing right, in to exactly. take a look at it to make sure there's no one inside of it. So, and you already got that on this truck. This really is the Swiss Army knife exactly. of trucks. It, you it, have it a little of is. everything. You know, it's making me want to come join you. Right. Well, hey, hey, applications are always open. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of that, if someone was watching the video right now and they want to come join you, how would they go about doing that? So, if you're uh, if you're local, you can stop into the station, uh, and you can talk to one of our live-ins. Uh, Nick is one of our head lives in. Okay. He's, he's usually here, so uh, he'd be able to help you out. Or you can go to our website or any one of our social media platforms. Okay. We have Instagram, Twitter. Uh, Facebook, Facebook's a big one, Facebook Messenger. Yep, yep. Uh, you can get a hold of us there, or you can go to our website, the rescue37.org. Okay. Uh, and you can go in there and it gives you membership information there. Awesome. So if you guys are watching this, definitely hit them up. You know, we'll put some of those links below. Uh, they always can use the help. It's a volunteer service here. Uh, you guys have how many members? Uh, so we say we have 50 members, but okay. I mean, active members, I mean, people that are coming out in the middle of the night going to calls and stuff like that, probably around between 16 and 20. Okay, that's pretty average for uh, around yeah. this area. Yeah. Um, so. But uh, we can always use more. Yeah. I mean, because uh, none of us are getting any younger. Right. And we always need to, to get that, uh, right. that new blood in. This truck makes me want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so here's another one of the attachment points for, okay. for either this winch or for that monopod that right. we were alluding to earlier. I mean, all this talk about the monopod, you, you're really going to want to see it set up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is a portable winch. This is a 10,000 pound winch. Okay. We can either plug it in there or we can plug it in on either side. Right. But you already have a pre-mounted one up front. We do. We have okay. the big one up front. So okay. that's for a mainline pool, 20,000 pounds or something along those lines. Okay. This is more for a smaller pool, only 10,000 pounds. Okay. Um, but a lot of times what it'll work is when you have a vehicle on its side, we'll take those struts. We'll put them on the side closest to the truck and we'll actually use that to pull it into Just the strut. Tighten it down a little to bit. To stabilize it. That way we're not worried about it rolling that way and those struts are keeping it from coming down any further this way. Awesome. So it's a big help there. Um, and like I told you before, we try to keep everything together. Yeah. Um, so this is all the stuff that's rated for, for this winch here. So okay. we have our, our chains, we have our, uh, our uh, snatch blocks, and we have our uh, slings and stuff okay. like that. So now we're working our way around to the passenger side, right? Right. Um, I told you before, we want to be able to work off of both sides. Oh, another little compliment. So you have your spreaders here again, you have your cutters here again, you have your simo unit here again with a with the hose behind it. Right. Of course, we have our saws all again. Saws all. You got your power unit up top. Um, so uh, with the uh, with the spreaders, you have different adapters for what you're trying to do. So. We talked about the come along just a second ago. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of us older people, you know, you take a come along to, to dislocate the, the steering, the steering column. Yep, I knew where right. you were going with that one. Yep. Um, so we have the Amcus chains here that go in to the spreaders so you can use the spreaders to, to bring it together and do that. Okay. Even though it's not common practice anymore, right, right. I should probably throw that out there. <laughs> um, we have a, a great Dewalt set here. So we have okay. between the Sawzalls, we have the, uh, the grinder and cutter. Yeah. Um, and then we have hammer drills, we have electric drills. When we get into the tech rescue world, I mean, you never know what you're gonna need. You may be driving in a screw one second, and then the next second you may need to cut something or whatever. So having that versatility of the battery tools is, is right. immense. And all these batteries are just crossed to yep. everyone. We keep all the batteries the same. Um, there's only a couple things because they're larger pieces of equipment okay. uh, that take different batteries, and they're gonna be kept inside with the equipment. Right. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay. Um, so we're, here we have our RAM assortment. Yeah. Um, just like with the struts that you saw earlier, you never know what size you're going to need. So you got to be ready to, right. to do all kinds. And then we have the different RAM heads in here for an right. extension. Yeah. So you got tiny all the way up to tall. Exactly. So this is, you know, pushing a dash off of somebody. Right. You know, putting it down into the B post and, you know, putting it up onto the dash and kind of rolling that dash Exactly. Because let's face it, nine times out of ten, if you have a front end collision, that dash is going to be pushed back onto somebody's waist. So you're going to have to do something to lift that lift up that off up. your waist. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely cool. I'm ready to go to work, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> now, I told you before uh, that we're going to have the airline over here as well. Uh, okay. Um, now, in order to control that, that all is behind here. Oh, wow. All okay. Right. So I told you before we had a four bank 6,000 PSI cascade system. Okay. Which is those cylinders like the one you saw on the other side. You'll see two more over here. Right. 
Then we also have more spare cylinders. Okay. And we also keep our spare breathing oxygen cylinders in here. Okay. So the system itself is pretty neat. This is just air. This is just air. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. um, so you can almost run this as a rehab. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's a good thing about when you're dispatching a true heavy rescue, you can get resources of multiple pieces. Right on one rig. Yeah. So it, it makes it a lot easier and uh, people like working it that way. Yeah. I like that it's actually sideways too. Many of these things I've seen sitting upright with oh, a few. Oh yeah, and you're, you're, you're oh, kind of reaching up, up trying, trying to get it or yeah, to shut the door. Land it sideways. It works just fine sideways. It yeah. doesn't change the, the yeah. function of it at all, does it? No, no, not at all. Um, and the other thing, we have to have adaptability because we never know what we're going to be using. So we actually have fill connections in here for scuba for different types of SCBA. Okay. Uh, Cause you can see we have the quick connection from MSA. Right. If they don't have that on, we still have the threaded connections in here. Okay. Uh, Cause you may get a like dragger, that. you may exactly. get a Scott, you may get a couple different ones. So you have to be ready for, for what's going to show up. That's thinking. All right. Um, <laughs> we have enough air cylinders here. I mean, if anybody ever gets uh, out of breath, then it's, then it's their wrong. fault. Cause you have them at the truck. <laughs> now I already warned you this was going to happen. I'm going to open this up. And you're going to have that redundancy. Yeah. You're going to have that cribbing on this side too, so we can make it work. That's awesome. All right. Um, then we do have more cylinders. More cylinders. <laughs> How many cylinders do you think are on this truck altogether? Uh, I believe uh, 21. 21 cylinders. Yeah, yeah. I could be wrong on that, but I believe that's a total. Yeah, it looks like it. You got all those plus ones on the seats plus those. So Whew. by the NFPA, you have to keep a spare cylinder for every seat you have. Yep. So we have 10 seats. Okay. So that's 10 cylinders in and of itself. Right. Plus the 10 that are actually in the pack. Okay. So that's 20 that, cylinders in and of itself. Yeah. Um, Just to meet the standards. Exactly. Okay. So now we're getting more into our tech rescue stuff. Okay. All right. So we have the air source card here. Um, so this is used to supply us with air in more remote locations, or okay. we can also use it to uh, supply air tools, right? running off air tools. Okay. Um, so that's what this card is for. Uh, the way it works is you can run off of one cylinder. As that cylinder gets low, you switch the other one, and then you can replace this cylinder. Or we actually have it set up that we could run it directly off the cascade with some portable lines that we have inside. Okay. We use this a lot of times for either using hand tools portably yep. or for confined space access. We'll take this out and we'll use this for that. Okay, okay, makes sense. And I sense. just mentioned confined space. Now yeah. there are two different types of uh, you know tools that you have when you're talking about tech rescue. A lot of times you'll have the OSHA or the industrial tools and then you'll have the NFPA tools. Different safety ratings, different factors and stuff like that. Yeah. Different manufacturers depending on what you're looking at. Um, so here we actually have one of the commercial industrial tripods okay. that we can use for confined space, and we have the head for it down there. Okay. Um, and then inside, so that's where you're going to set up the, the whole tripod that you can repel someone down into a, a right. A, well, they're not going to repel down. We'll, we'll either lower them down, yeah, uh, but it'll be a controlled descent yeah. or controlled ascent, okay. depending on what the case may be, <laughs> right. down in the hole. Okay. So that's exactly what that's for. Okay. That's for being able to make that happen. And here are the other two cylinders I told you about for the cascade system. Okay. Uh, you may wonder why we have this pipe here. Yeah. Um, because a big concern you have when you're talking about confined space is actually going to be your ventilation. Yeah, your air um, quality and stuff like so that. So you'll see this pipe, and then we also have another one down below. So is um, that what you I would see uh, maybe for us PennDOT? They're going down into a tunnel. Right. They, so you'll they see have that air tube New going York down? New York City is notorious. If you're driving down a New York City street <laughs> and you see a, a utility worker, they're going to have one of these pipes going in that hole to okay. give them fresh air because okay. just about every utility portal that they go into is going to be considered a confined space. Right. Um, so they're going to have that already set up so that they can do that. It's nice to have that on there. So you're not, you know, you're still using your mask. You're still doing the safety, but having just that extra little bit is going to make a big difference on how long you can stay. I'll tell you where it makes a huge difference and something that people don't think about is winter time. If you have somebody that's trapped in a car in the winter time, we can actually force heated air through this pipe into the vehicle to help keep them warm yeah. while we're doing the rescue. Because let's face it, they have blood loss, they might be in shock. So we have to worry about hypothermia, we have to worry about all those different aspects going into it. As a paramedic, that is, that rings home to me. That, you know, that's one thing that we struggle with, especially when the extrications get to be 30, maybe 45 minutes, right. you know, in the winter time, that's, it would happen. I've never actually had to use that or had anybody even offer that. So the fact that you guys are stepping up and doing something like that, absolutely awesome. So that's exactly what this is. This is the heater to okay. go along with that fan and that blower that you're that you're probably familiar with from the confined space stuff. Now, now I know you're a couple counties over, but I might be calling you. <laughs> hey, we're, we're always willing to travel. Um, 
And then, uh, so we also, along with this heater, it's back behind here, but we also have the redundancy of we have an electric confined space heater okay. that we can plug in and we can also use to blow through. Now it doesn't put out as much air as this one does, but it'll still work in a pinch. Right. Uh, and it's still able to be used. Um, now you had said before about putting a pilot hole in. Yes. When we were talking drill, about that. Yep. So this is our big Hilti okay. drill here. Yeah. That's now, the one that's going to yep, go deep. So basically it's what somebody might refer to as a jackhammer. Yeah. I mean, it looks very similar to it. It works very similar. The difference is uh, ours will drill and not just do the hammer. Okay. Uh, so basically it's a huge hammer drill. Uh, and then we have another one of those right here, depending on what we're doing. Okay. Now we, we talked about the monopod when we were in the back and we said we we're going to set that up for you later. Okay. So we also have a tripod head that'll go on there. So a difference between the Arizona Vortex that we have inside and this this tripod that we have here, the Arizona Vortex is set up more for persons. Okay. okay it's more set up for a two person load and stuff like that. Whereas this one, we can use to hoist equipment, uh, structural collapse okay. or some kind of uh, confined space. We may have to lift up a concrete slab or something right, like that. Right, right. So we can use this to rig up with the Paratech system and we can use that as a platform to lift it up. Um, let's face it. Who doesn't like big tools, okay? <laughs> so we can sit there and feel like a NASCAR crew it's as we're going through. Um, so I did tell you that we had that one inch drive that runs directly off the, the cascade system. Yep. So this is where we keep all the sockets and everything else to go with that. Okay. So this is a lot of our air power stuff. Okay. So we're gonna have the air power cutoff saw, uh, hacksaw, staplers, drills, yep. you name it between the air chisels and then this is all gonna be our big impact. Right. right. Now, if you wanna try to do some weight lifting, I'll let you pull off the big impact. <laughs> all right, you can see how heavy that thing is. All right, right. Um, we don't know what type of call we're gonna have when we get to an interstate. Uh, or for trench rescue. A lot of times if you have a sidewall collapse in a trench rescue, you have to fill that in with something. Traditionally, you fill it in with dirt from the hole or something like that, or you may be able to fill it in with a medium or a, a low pressure airbag. So we keep our medium pressure airbags out here. Okay. Not only for lifting heavy vehicles on the interstate, but also if we'd have a trench rescue or something like that, we can use that as a filler behind there. So what's That's the difference between the medium airbags and those flat, thick, heavy ones? So Is it you're talking about these right here. So the, I, yeah, I've kind of seen the pillow bags versus the flat ones. All right, so the biggest thing you have to remember is when one of these bags fills up, it, it ends up looking like a football. Okay. Okay, so it's oblong. That's why we have the X in the middle because you want that to be planted on where you're going to be doing the lift. Okay. Um, so you have your high pressure airbags, which are going to inflate and give you that. And then you have your medium and low pressure airbags. Now these are going to give you a higher lift. Okay. All right. These are going to, I believe these, this one right here is a 36 inch bag. Okay. So it's going to lift up like three feet off the ground. Right. So that's going to give you a lift for a larger piece of equipment. And it also gives you a little bit more tonnage that you're able to lift. Okay. Whereas these here, it's going to lift at a smaller area. All right. Right. And it's going to lift at a higher pressure. Right. But you can slide this into a smaller section to get it up yeah. before you can get something like so that. So that's where our cribbing comes into place. Right. So we slide that in, we lift up to whatever the max height of this bag's gonna be. So <laughs> for this one right here, it's 8.9 inches. So okay. 8.9 inches, we're only talking like that. Then you slide your cribbing in. Right, then we're gonna slide our cribbing in and we can either put this on top of the cribbing and go up another 8.9 inches. Okay. Or we can switch to a larger bag and just keep going up that way until okay. we get the height that we're gonna need. Right. So I, it, it, to go along with that, um, so we can run these either off the air source cart. Yep. We can run it off the rig itself. Okay. Uh, we can run them off SCBAs. Yep. Or we can sit here and we actually have a hand There's pump. A hand pump. So that we can pump them up by hand if we're in a really remote location. Redundancy. <laughs> hey, hey I, I've said the word yeah. and now you see it. Um, but that's pretty much what uh, what we got in there. So you can see we have an assortment. Of things yeah, depending yeah. On what absolutely we're going to get everything into. you need. Uh, I alluded to the hydrofusion earlier. Yep. So that's what these are. So these are a 20,000 pound uh, strut that okay. you can use for lifting. Uh, to go along with that, we have our, that's just our hydraulic pumps to go along with okay. it. And those are your hand pumps. That's our hand pumps. Yep. In fact, here, let me pull this out. So you had said earlier about your. Yep, the duck bills yep. in the, uh, on the rabbit tool. So uh, even though we have a lot of innovation on here, we also have a lot of old school tech, I'll call it. Right. So we still have the port of power units. Uh, we still have the, the, the bottle jacks and stuff like that to go along with it because you know, depending on what situation you're in, although that's older technology, that stuff still works great. I right. mean, you can see there, that's a 55 ton, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, bottle, bottle jack. jack. So you can use that to do some heavy lifting right. to make something work. Right. Um, so that's what we kind of keep in here. And then we have the heads for the, 
hydrofusions okay. to go along with that because yep. we don't want to have to run back to the back and get the new head and, and bring that out and stuff okay. like that. Uh, it looks like you also have a torch in here. Oh, hey, well, you can't have something without having a little bit of fire. Right? <laughs> so, yeah, we have our oxygen acetylene torch here. And then in the back, that's actually a petrogen torch. Okay. So that runs off of gasoline. Mm. Gasoline and oxygen mixed together. Okay. And that's what runs that That one. sounds fun. So, <laughs> well, you know, it, it takes a little getting used to. Okay. Um, uh, the oxygen acetylene is definitely something that more people are familiar with because it's been around for years. Yeah, that's what I use in my metal shop. Exactly. Yep. Um, but the petrogen torch, it takes a little get used to, but once you get it used, or once you get used to it, right. you can cut through a lot heavier metal with a lot less. Okay. All right, so that's why we keep that back there. Right. Um, then here, so these may be the come-alongs. We talked about the cable grip hoist in the back to okay. use as a come-along. Yep. These are probably the more traditional come-alongs that you yeah, use to. Yeah, that's what we use to bring up the dash or exactly. you know, roll the uh, steering wheel out of the way. So we have two and a half ton, we have three ton, and we have a ton ton, and okay. a 10 ton. So, I mean, depending on what you're doing, depends on what you're going to need to make that work. Um, then, of course, we have our various hand tools. Um, we have, you know, sockets and pliers and Allen wrenches and stuff like that. Because sometimes not breaking things is it okay. is the way to you go. You can actually hey, you undo things. People put it together by hand. Well, <laughs> you could say at one time people yeah. put something together by hand. Um, it's not always the case anymore, but you should be able to take it apart by hand. Right, right. Uh, to go along with that tech rescue stuff that I talked about earlier, here we have our hammers and pry bars, tape measures and stuff like that, so we can do those appropriate cuts. Right. Um, a very important thing, especially this time of year, we have bee spray. Uh, yes. Because um, it's a lot of times we'll go to a remote location, all of a sudden, you know, before you know it, there's hornets and something else coming at you. Uh, we also have the bolt cutters, the smaller bolt cutters. Uh, we have some marking paint here. So we can use that for a marking a scene. Uh, if the police need to use it so they can mark vehicle locations, okay. something like that. Yeah, where the tires landed and all that. We can use it if we're doing search and rescue to mark trails. Okay. Um, or we can use it if we're doing tech rescue or something like that with a trench rescue so we can mark utility lines and we can mark our safety zones and stuff like that. So we keep that on here. This is more hazmat related. These are all non-sparking tools in here. Okay. So these are going to be brass tools that we don't have to worry about them putting off a spark or something like that if right. we're in an, uh, a flammable atmosphere. Right, right. All right. All right. Then this is the same as the other side. Okay. We have our quick card here. Yep. With our cribbing in it. And then we have our toolkit and uh, awesome. our windshield cutter. So the only thing we haven't seen yet is inside, inside the alleyway or galleyway. Well, we still have the front oh. with, the, with the main winch in it. Okay. Let's take a look at that real quick. I always forget that the front of the truck can be a working area too. You know, many times I just think of this as a booster line for the fire truck. But on a rescue, you use it just as well as a, of an engine. Oh, ride. absolutely. I mean, so we saw the little winch in the back. Well, let's face it, it's a big truck. We want a big winch right. to go with it. So here we have our main 20,000 pound. Like I told you earlier, this is an electric winch. Wow. Um, so you can see the size of the cable there. Right. Um, and you can see, so we have 75 foot of cable on here. Okay. Now, that doesn't sound like a, a, a lot of cable. Um, however, the less cable you have, the more strength you have to go along with it. Right. So you can always add chain to the end of your cable. All right, yeah. so that's kind of the theory we went off of. That okay. We're not going to be pulling more than 75 foot without being able to add some kind of chain for some kind of length. Right. So we have to keep that chain that's rated for the heavy duty winch. Okay. Uh, and we keep all that up here. So yeah. we have Just slings. Put it right in some chains. ammo cans and put yep. your numbers on it. Oh, you, oh. you got to love federal surplus yeah. for getting your ammo cans. <laughs> and then we have additional slings, and then we have snatch blocks. And then we have our shackles, shackles and stuff like that things. all up here together so we don't have to run far. So to would this, work. if for some reason this gets stuck in the snow and I need to use this, would this pull your uh, own vehicle out? So so once again, we're about 56,000 pounds. Right. So I mean, um, it's, uh, it, it's not going to be able to do a straight line pull to okay. get it out. But along with the traction control that we have built into this okay. with the differential locks and stuff like that, with the winch, we could probably make something work. That's all you need to worry about. <laughs> all right. All right. Now, so you want to go inside and yeah. take a look at the inside of the yeah. car? Yeah. All right. Watch your step getting up there. All right. And watch your head. Yeah. So you can see we keep padding here. There's <laughs> That's a reason a good for that. I hit mine in, in the ambulance like that all the time. All right. So let's start here. Um, so I said we're set up for doing various different things. One of the things that we're set up for doing is uh, different types of rescue, including uh, search and rescue. So rather than the, the standard radios like we have down here, where we might be deployed away a, a distance where we don't have the repeaters. Okay. So what we do as a backup system, 
we keep a bunch of the yeah little, little walkabouts. Yeah, two way radio systems that I would use for hunting. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, they work good enough for that. Yeah. So I mean, exactly. Um, then we also have our ICS back, vest back there. Okay. Uh, which I know you talked to Mark a little bit about uh, when you were doing the station tour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, we have those up there. Uh, we have our other chargers for everything from our search cameras to our pass load guns. All of that is kept in here because that's where the equipment's kept. Okay. Uh, so we want to keep it close by. Yeah. And then we have our larger. Um, Maybe uh, a bag didn't fit outside. Right, exactly. Yep. Um, now I'm actually going to show you down here. So I'm not sure if you're going to be able to catch it or not. All right. But if you look here, I alluded to the Vortex system. Or okay. The, uh, yeah, the Arizona Vortex earlier. Yep. So that's what we keep down here. Okay. So we can grab that. Uh, and there's also a sked board down there. So we can grab that at the same time. We can take everything. Everything is backpack mounted. So a couple people can just throw it on their back and go where they need to go. That's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. We do have four riding positions back here. So we have the SCBAs for them. Okay. We do not have headsets for the people back here though. Um, now you had said earlier about uh, some water rescue stuff. So if you look in here, so we have all of our tech rescue helmets. So these helmets are good because they're rated not only for just the 1006 stuff, but they're okay. also rated, rated for swift water because okay. they allow for drainage yep. uh, as they go through. So we keep those in here. We also keep a couple of the older style helmets, which most people are familiar with. Yep. Um, and then we have a couple different types of PFDs. We have the type five PFDs because everybody who rides this is rated for swift water okay. uh, or trained for swift water. Yeah. We keep the booties because hey, who wants to get their feet wet? <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then we, for the winter time, these are actually uh, PFDs, but are uh, bomber jackets. Oh. So they're actually float coats. So okay. it's something you may see the fish commission or something like that cruising around. Right, in. right. Um, but I mean, a lot of times if we're riding the rescue itself, we're more of a support piece at that point. Okay. Um, so we'll allow the people to wear those while they're walking along the shore. Impressive. To keep uh, to keep the patients and our and our people warm in the winter time, we have this all set up for hypothermia care. Okay. So I don't know. Uh, being a paramedic, you might be familiar with these. These are actually battery powered heat blankets. Yes. So yeah. uh, it's uh, we can put these on a victim uh, as they come out of the water, or we can put them uh, on a victim in that vehicle accident situation we talked about right. with the fine space right. stuff. Uh, and we can use those to work. Then we have our dry suits and we have some uh, wool suits to put on, or not wool suits, our, our bear suits, yes. I call them, to put on underneath the dry suits. Right, right. Uh, the dry suits, a lot of people don't know, don't don't actually give you insulation. Yeah, there's no, unlike a wetsuit where you right. have some of that thermal barrier, you don't have that with a dry exactly. suit. Exactly, so just you basically... need something to keep you warm. Right, right. Um, and then of course we have some beanie caps for guys to put on when they come out, either okay. for them or for the victim. Okay. All right. Now we're starting to get back more into our tech rescue stuff. Okay. So we have some search cams. We have a couple different styles of search cams. Um, so this is just a handheld one that you can use to stick into a hole real quick. Okay. Uh, you can see. Now I can go up to the pile and I can stick that in, and you can stand back and take a look away, and, okay. and you can watch move and see to the right, what's going move on to the left. exactly. Uh -huh. And make it work that way. So right. that's a good thing about this search camera here. Right. Um, and then we have the one that goes on that pole. Yep, I see I the cord back there, yeah. Yep, so that's actually in here. This is the battery pack and everything to go with that search kit. Okay. Um, if we're doing search, odds are, if we're using this stuff, we're going to be in a confined space type scenario. Uh, so we have our SABA packs, which are back here, which is the, the SCBA, so to speak, that you right. would use if you're doing confined space because it's a lot smaller. It's yeah. more of an escape cylinder. You're going to be on a supplied air setup okay. running from something else like our Cascade unit or like the uh, air source card I showed you earlier. Right. Um, so that's what these reels are for. So we can run those in conjunction with that stuff to make that work. Okay. Um, for structural collapse, trench, stuff like that, well, we're just for patching a roof. We have our pass load gun, which is the battery powered air nailer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody's used to. Uh, and then in here, I mean, even the best need refreshers. So we keep a lot of our tech rescue manuals in here. Okay. So you'll see we have a fall guide and stuff like that that you may be familiar with right. for doing tech rescue. So you can have a quick reference just to go back one and see. Uh, it's always make good sure to have that check. Right. Even yeah. if you're the guy working and maybe the guy behind you is going to, like, let's just double check, make sure we're doing this right. Exactly. You, you know, instant commander or whoever, you have that available for them. Okay. So moving back here further, uh, we already talked about some of the tech rescue and some of the sea space stuff. Here we keep those SABA packs that I was talking about yep. for the confined space. Uh, we also keep a variety of respirators because we don't know what type of conditions we're going to have. 
whether we're going to need to be in a full face respirator or whether we're going to be able to just use a canister respirator or something like that. Right. Because, right. I mean, let's face it, nobody wants to be in a full SCBA and stuff like that if you don't have to. It's hot. Long of time. <laughs> yeah. And something else uh, that we keep is because nobody wants to mess up their day to day clothes. And let's face it, we're volunteers. So somebody could be coming in in shorts or something like sure. that. So we actually keep coveralls back here. Um, as well as knee pads okay. for crawling around, you know, as we're going through a rubble pile or something like that to protect both their knees and their elbows. Yeah, um, absolutely thinking. This truck is absolutely amazing. I, you know, I, I feel like I keep saying it over and over, but you really have covered every basis that you need in here. Well, we definitely try. Uh, you even got more. So I don't know if you can see back here. Uh, we actually have some base plates for uh, some of our jacks. Okay. And we also have some hazmat equipment down in there. This is like a quick reaction hazmat bag. So okay. if you pull that bag out that has Tyvek suit, it has booties, it has gloves, it has everything you need to do an initial entry okay. in, a lump, in, a, yeah. in a hazmat. At least to do containment. Uh, right, while right. you're doing monitoring. <laughs> so with the, with the hazmat stuff, I mean, are you familiar with the pigs? Yep. Um, so we have to keep a good assortment of pigs, especially going on the highways and around the waterways and stuff like that. Right. So these are actually floating pig booms that okay. we can put on the, on the water surface to help absorb in any kind of petroleum product that, before it goes downstream. So we keep those here. We keep the regular pig mats for like underneath the vehicle yep. over here. Um, and then we also have uh, a LSP, and uh, a skid board back here, okay. or a kid board, or excuse board. me, yep. that we can use uh, if we're doing any kind of technical ex uh, extrication. Okay. All right, now moving over to this side, we're keeping with that tech rescue theme. Okay. Um, so we really have some hammer drills, we have anchors and stuff like that that we can put, because uh, most of the roadways anymore, you're gonna have Jersey barriers, right? Yeah. Uh, so even if we just need to put an attachment point in there, we can use that Hilti tool I showed you earlier. Uh, or we have another hammer drill up here that we can use to, we can set in uh, different types of anchors yeah. into that concrete. Uh, and stabilize the vehicle very quickly. Right. And one thing I want you to note, this little, this container is heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we good also label have to our, have. <laughs> we also have our lockout tag out stuff up here. Okay. Uh, especially if we're doing any kind of extrication from a piece of equipment inside of an industrial building or okay. something like that. We're going to practice our lockout tag out yeah. uh, as well as our elevator. Okay. Uh, rescue stuff so yes. this has all our elevator keys and stuff like that so the two go together yep. so we can lock out the elevator before we try so to is that it. where you would keep the k tool and stuff like that yep yep, yep. okay it's, this is a big thing which isn't on right now it's the air, the air conditioner. conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> um so what we try to do is we try to keep an assortment of different things when it comes to rope rescue because we may use rope rescue if we're doing confined space we may use rope rescue if we're doing water rescue we may use rope if we're doing just high or low angle rescue. okay so we have to keep an assortment of things as we go through so these three compartments right here are dedicated solely to the rope world okay all right so we have different lengths of ropes anywhere from a hundred foot of utility rope to a 900 foot pre-rig z-rig wow Okay. Uh, the reason that came about is uh, if you look behind us, you'll see the mountain. Yeah. Uh, we actually had a gentleman who was doing photography on the end of the mountain fell three quarters of the way down the mountain. Oh. It wasn't accessible from the roadway below, so we actually had to go down and get it. Okay. At that time, 600 foot was the most that we had. He was about 625 feet. Oh, just um, there. So, uh, so we went with a with a longer setup. Okay. Uh, so we keep that on here, and then. We have the 22 line gun okay. uh, in order to get a line to right. a messenger line from one place to another. Uh, and then we have our actual repelling bags and harnesses okay. in here. And you use full body harnesses. You don't use just the lower. So uh, we, we the harnesses we have will actually either be a type two or a type three, okay. depending on what you do. Because the type three, which is basically the shoulder mount, yep. comes a detached from the harness. Okay. Um, so in the repelling bags, we actually keep class two harnesses. Okay. But here we keep the class threes. Gotcha. Um, so you can use them either, either way. or, depending on. Now we prefer that everybody be in a class three harness, okay. uh, just because it gives you the additional attachment points and gives you that additional rating and stuff like right. that. So we tend to lean more towards. And it that. looks like you already have them kind of pre-rigged with all your ATCs, your oh, yep. propellers, or whatever yep. you need. It's yep. all pre-rigged. Everything's right good here. to go. Uh, we even have the uh, the step-in supports to relieve the stress off your legs if you're hanging somewhere okay. too long. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then here you had asked earlier uh, when we were in the front part of the cab about ALS equipment and stuff like yeah. that. Now we don't carry ALS equipment, but this is all of our med bags here. So we keep stuff for cervical, uh, C-spine uh, stabilization. stabilization. Okay. 
Uh, we also have peds bags. So are uh, your first responders, are, are you classified as EMTs, first responders, medics? What are you guys classified here? What, the so there's no formal association uh, with any, uh, with the Federation or anything like okay. that. However, a majority of our responders are either at least EMT A or EMT B, excuse okay. me, or paramedics. Okay. Um, there are a few outliers that are, you know, first aid CPR, which is a requirement to run with us to begin with. Okay. Um, but there are, Several that are that are cleared, especially for the rescue, are that higher level. Right, of right. And it's good to have those kind of things, whether you're using it on the public or on your guys' self. You guys are doing a ton of technical rescue stuff that can get you into danger. And if something goes gone, goes on, you guys are ready to take care of even yourself. Well, exactly. So. Um, and back to that one word we talked about, redundancy. Yeah. So dull med bags. So if especially if you have a mass casualty incident or something like that, right. uh, when you're going down through trying to do triage and you're trying to work on patients, we have different bags. So you can go to different cars at different times, different people uh, to make it work. Awesome. How about we go put this thing into work? I'd love to do that. All you right. See that monopod? Yeah, let's go do that. All right. All right. So Chief, now that we finished the walk around, we got a crew here that came in for a call. You guys are going to show us how this actually kind of goes together, right? Yeah, one of the key concepts of the uh, the rescue when we were planning it out was to, the versatility of it, to be able to do different functions. So one of the things they're going to do here is using a Paratex monopod actually off the side mounted to our high point anchors. Dude, that looks, sounds awesome. Show me what you guys do. All right. Yeah, do your thing. We'll do it. All right, you guys want to grab uh, the highway strut out of the back uh, and the monopod kit out of this compartment here, and we'll get start getting stuff set. Do you guys want to set the anchors up there on the, on the high points, please? So what would this actually be used for, Chief? So a lot of times we're not able to get straight on to an incident. Okay. Right? So I, we could hook into the back, obviously, which is what happens most times. Um, but if we would come to somewhere, uh, we have a mountain right behind us. A lot of times we can go along the road and we can actually use this as an anchor to go down over the side. Okay. Uh, so if we're offset a little bit or something yeah. like that. So yeah. this is great for that type of purpose. A lot, lot more safe. Right, and if we're using the Paratex, uh, we can actually build it up a little bit stronger than a typical rope system. Okay. Uh, it gives us that little safety factor in there. Dude, that's awesome. 60 or 40? Uh, you can do the 40. So as we're watching them work here, you're gonna see a lot of guys doing a lot of different things all at once. So everybody on the fire ground has a job to do and they kind of work as a team to get that done. Some will be working up top, some will be working on the side in order to set this rigging up. So as we go through, like I say, the main point of this is use it as a high point anchor when we're doing an offset. Right. So we actually had these installed uh, when we were building the apparatus uh, to give us that so we could tie this back and we could use it off yeah, the Yeah, I think that's like the this. first time I see it. They're not really D hooks. So what do you even call those things? It's just high point anchor. High point anchor, <laughs> anchor yeah. Points. Yeah, I, that's the first time I've seen it on any kind of rescue like this. Um, so it's very popular out west in the California, uh, oh. Arizona type area and stuff like that. They do this type of setup pretty often. Right. Uh, but as far as local around here, uh, we're the only company that I can think of that has it preset right. uh, to do it this way. It's pretty slick. So now what's next? So we put the pole up here. Obviously, we're going to tie into each of those anchors, correct? That's correct. Gonna, we're going to run a rope from corner to corner? Right. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we're going to use that and we're actually going to set our angle depending on what we're going to be doing. Okay. Uh, and then our, our actual uh, our rope uh, that we're going to be using is going to come down through and it'll go through okay. uh, the single head here. Right. So if you want to grab one of the Z rigs a while, you can. How are you guys making out up there, Mark? Good. All right. So this is where all those knots that we tied during fire one school oh, really yeah. come in, into play. <laughs> and it's one of those things, if you don't practice, you lose it. Yep. So. <laughs> so 
So as we go through, we use the Aztec kits because it's pre-rigged four to one. So it makes it tying them off oh, a yeah, lot yeah. quicker. Maybe we can show the uh, viewers what that is. The Aztec, you're talking about this on yes. the corner here. Yeah, the CMC Aztec kits. So we can come in and get a little bit closer here. Kind of show it. Chief, talk us through what this is. All right, so the way this works, it's a system that CMC designed, uh, and it basically has everything built into one. You have a four to one system. Uh, it also comes with travel edge restraint, basically in the same bag. So it eliminates a lot of having to do the rigging ahead of time. Um, the biggest thing you have with them is depending on which way you're trying to use it, depends on which way the uh, Prusix gets to go. Okay. Um, so you can adjust it so you can use it, the Prusix from either side. Right. Uh, blue to blue and orange to orange. Um, and it allows you to release it down that way. Right, right. Um, it'll probably be easier for you to release the Prusix to push it around. Yeah. Okay. So if we release this pin right here, that releases the system. Okay. All right. So that we can pull it down. The only thing we got to watch is we're going to be using the blue now. Okay. So we can set it here. So we just want to make sure that we keep the blue nice with us as we're going. Okay. And then when we take it, we're bringing the blue back over here and lock it into this. Right. And what people need to know here. is that Prusix is there to keep that from moving once you've, exactly. set, once you've set it. So the way it works, you can see the Prusix actually makes it so the rope doesn't slide through anymore. Right, right. It's It'll almost like our old descender when we're exactly. doing ropes. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So we can use this. We can hook on to the, to the anchor or to the uh, tripod head now. Okay. So if you guys want to grab another carabiner. So as you can see, the training that takes for these guys to learn how to do this, they want to do it over and over and learn this just that quick. So it's going to take you know, a good week's worth of learning ropes and learning rigging just to put something like this together. Uh, and these guys are doing an excellent job. So Chief, that rope's a little different than the ones that you're using to secure the rig with. So this is a life safety half inch rope, um, which is pretty much the industry standard for any time we're doing any kind of life safety evolutions. Um, and you mentioned the training I heard earlier. So one of the things we do to make it easier for everybody is we actually <laughs> label what we're doing. Right, right. Right now, you guys are setting the angle that you want. The Correct. guys up top are tying it in, right? Yep. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, just remember, when we put weight on it, we're going to come down a little bit, too. All right? So basically, the way the setup is right now, this will be coming down depending on where we're going to. Okay. And then we just have a change of direction on the bottom. And then we could set up our line system somewhere else. Let's say there was a guardrail or something like that. We can use that and run our line system this way. Okay. Or if we're limited space, like this is parked right next to the guardrail, then we can move it around and run it that way, whatever we have to do. Right, right. So this is the working end that's gonna, maybe I gotta go down the side Correct. of the cliff. So this is gonna I can go clip to, into my harness. This is gonna either go to your rescuer or to the victim, whatever okay. the case turns out to be. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times they use stoke baskets right, to bring some out. So right. that can clip to the stoke basket. Exactly. So then, anytime we send this down, we're going to have a rescuer that's going to be in a harness. Uh, they're going to be tied off to this, and then we're going to start building redundant systems so we have safeties and backups and everything along those lines. Okay. Okay. Um, but it's one of the capabilities that we spec this out to allow us to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this will actually extend out further. So you can see we're fully retracted right now. Right. Uh, the only thing you have to watch is the obviously the longer you go, the less weight rating you're going to have. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, 
So that's one of the things we have to think about as we're setting this up. Right, but even that, you have labels on it to right. tell you, you know, how far yep. out which one. Yeah, Paratex is very nice to, <laughs> to dummy everything down for us. Right, right. So even <laughs> at, at the extended, it looks like you still do almost 3,000 pounds oh, yeah. fully extended. Correct. So, and I don't weigh that much, so. <laughs> so we're not going to use this to lift a vehicle. Right. Um, but we can use this to have at least a two-person rescue system without, right. without really sweating. Right. Would you use it to stabilize a vehicle, maybe? Or is it more um, so, for the rescue? So up and if down? we were going to do that, uh, most times we'd use the portable winch out of the back. Okay. So we have that 10,000 pound portable winch in the back. We can put that on the sides, and we'd use that to do a drawback system. Okay. To support the weight of the vehicle. Okay. Yeah, and just like that, you got it up and ready to go. I mean, I'd be very comfortable clipping on and going down the hill with that. So. Oh yeah. I mean, well, we don't have anything secure in it right now, <laughs> or otherwise I should. But, uh, but yeah, it's a uh, it's a pretty slick system. Um, it's one of those, once you practice with it and stuff like that, it can go together real quick. Right. So when you go to order a truck like this, how long does it take you to figure out, this is what I want? This is what the things that we we are we want to do with our truck? So we were very lucky. Uh, our previous rescue truck that we had was a 2002 KMA. Uh, and that worked very well for us throughout the years. So a lot of the stuff that we spec'd out with this truck is a redundancy to what we had there. Okay. Uh, as far as the high point anchors and stuff like that, that comes with uh, different people having the different talents and right. the different know-hows. That's right. the good thing about a rescue company is you have those people that have those little niches uh, and they're able to put that together to help spec out the best truck right. Uh, right. for what you're gonna do. So, you know, if I join the company, I come from a different area, maybe we do things a little different. My two cents plays a factor into when you're building the next truck because oh. I bring experience that you may not have had. And two of the people that we have on every truck committee, uh, we have one that's the fleet, uh, fleet mechanic uh, so he kind of says, hey, this will work, this won't work as okay. far as the engine and components and stuff like that. And the other guy is actually an engineer. Uh, he's not a mechanical engineer, right. uh, but still, he sits there, he'll do CAD drawings for us, and he'll be able to figure it all out. They're two great assets to have. That's the other advantage of being in the volunteer world, because everybody brings other world experience into what you're doing. Right, right. I've always joked on our channel that, you know, firemen are the jack of all trades. You know, we do welding, we do auto mechanics, we do ropes, rescues, you know, all different kind of things. And we need those people. So I want to thank everybody that's here today for, you know, volunteering their time and showing us what it is to run a rescue. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Once again, this was a station rig with Susquehanna Township doing their fire rescue company. And this is their heavy rescue. Thank you all for watching. Before we end, do us a favor, hit subscribe, hit notifications so we can keep bringing you more. We're trying to get that 100,000 subscriber mark. With your guys' help, we can do that. Last but not least, get yourself some merchandise. Go to our website, watchheroesnextdoor.com. Pick, your pick yourself something up, help support us. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next week.